Um, we're moving on to s number four, uh, which is the discussion of the sites for the College Park Academy and City Hall. Uh, who's coming to the table to join us on this? Mr. Brewer, are you on the phone still? I am still here. All right. Here. Okay. Well, it's good to hear you here. Do you want to? Uh, we've come to the uh, item number four: the uh, discussion of sites for the College Park Academy and City Hall. Is there anything you'd like to say as a few words just to open this up? No, I, I don't think so. Um, I think we're going to have to I'm not sure what I would say to, to open it up, um, okay. but I'm here really to, to try to answer any questions that I can okay. well, as we'll, you go along. I appreciate you being on the phone. Uh, Mr. Greer, do you want to kind of introduce the excellent memo that you wrote to us? Um, sure. Um, uh, at, at a meeting that uh, was held on January 25th, um, Senator Rosapep, um uh, presented uh, several financing models for the Alhuda property, um, and those are uh, that memo is uh, in your packet on page 76. Um, they uh, included uh, options for the city as the purchaser, uh, the academy as the purchaser, um, the city, uh, uh, the university is a lender, a private lender, uh, and whether the city would be uh, the guarantor uh, of that loan. Um, this is one of the properties that uh, was under consideration. The other property is the Terrapin Trader property, um, Paint Branch Parkway, and the university will be making a proposal uh, on the Terrapin Trader property um, at a later date. Um, so I was asked, um, well, uh, of these three models on page 76, um, which um, I would prefer if, if the decision were up to me, um, and uh, although I don't like any of the three uh, <laughs> because they, each of the three requires the city to either borrow $10 million uh, or guarantee someone else's borrowing of $10 million. Um, but if I had to choose uh, amongst the three, uh, I said that I would choose um, number three. Uh, and so I was asked to write up uh, some information on how I would uh, tweak number three um, to protect us as best I could. Um, and so that's basically what I did um, is assuming the the academy purchased the property um, because the city uh, the best uh, borrowing that I can get is uh, right now 3.3 percent for 20-year loan um, fixed rate only for 15 years and then possible floating after that uh, with an annual debt service of six hundred ninety four thousand um, dollars the from what I understand, the budget for the academy um, uh, has them paying uh, either rent or debt service of approximately $500,000. Um, at um, at 3% uh, for 30 years, the debt service would come to 512000 so we're going to sort of call that part even. Um, so if the city were to go out and borrow um, from a bank, uh, and pay $694,000, uh, hypothetically, the Academy uh, would only be able to pay us $500,000, which is what they have in their budget for debt service or rent. So therefore, it would be costing us $194,000 a year um, for 20 years. Um, so Senator Rosapap um, thinks that, well, maybe the university would loan us um, $10 million, um, or would, excuse me, would loan the Academy $10 million uh, if we were the guarantor um, at 3% for 30 years. So, um, so that, if, if that's, you know, possible, um, then 
the debt service on that would be 513,000 and if the uh, academy has budgeted 500 then that's more or less a wash so um, the, it is thought that the university if it were the lender would have no interest in acquiring the Alhuda property uh, if the academy were to close or default um, on um, on this loan uh, and so um, I suggested um, the university uh, that that if the academy is a purchaser that the city be given a first right of refusal to purchase the property in the event the academy closed or defaulted uh, and give either the academy or the city some period of time if if there was a default um, to resell the property um, rather than the city having to pay five hundred thousand dollars a year in debt service uh, on a property that um, that really wasn't part of their um, functional you know operations um, and uh, so I just I spelled out a little bit um, about our current finances um, long-term debt um, we have uh, seven million six hundred fifty two thousand dollars on the parking garage uh, we anticipate needing to borrow two million dollars uh, in the coming fiscal year for a new vehicle master lease um, and um, and then there's still um, the possibility of a new city hall or expansion of the existing city hall uh, and there's uh, the undergrounding of utilities so I'm just pointing it out not really um, you know taking a stand on what to do just trying to offer um, information and uh, clarification so we appreciate that uh, mr. Wayne I saw your hand but before you ask the question I just Senator Rosebeth do you want to add anything to uh, mr. Gross remarks um, yeah, I would actually. Um, very, very helpful. Very much on point. Very much consistent with the, the discussions that, that we've been having. Um, I, I just say a couple things. Um, again, sort of like the undergrounding issue is, you all need to decide how much you want College Park Academy at Alhuda. <laughs> That's kind of a threshold question. If you don't want College Park Academy at Alhuda, you don't need need to worry about how to finance it. So, threshold question one is, do you want it? Uh, as you know. The board of the school has uh, decided, I would say, that we believe either the Alhuda property or the Terrapin Trader property can work for the school. And so we've asked you all to think about whether you want to put together a plan and a, basically a proposal to the school board saying, here is how we are willing to make Alhuda work. And we've asked the university to put together a plan and say, here's how we're willing to make Terrapin Trader work. And so the university is off doing that in the same time schedule that you're, you're doing this. Um, the dynamics for the school are, it's got to work financially for the school, which is exactly what, what Mr. Gross said, is it, fundamentally the debt service or the lease can't exceed $500,000 a year basically and the timing of it has to be such that it works which is which is which is easier I think um, so that's the context of these discussions we've had about how can we put together a proposal that that, that you all might be interested in um, I think that there are a lot of twists and turns on the kind of models you're looking at but I think the essence of them are is nobody is going to lend the school the money unless somebody guarantees it <laughs> who has a balance sheet the school doesn't have the school has a balance sheet of a couple hundred thousand dollars so no one's going to lend ten million dollars to somebody who has a couple hundred thousand dollars uh, without a guarantor from the city or the university or the city and the university so that's second threshold issue um, third issue is as Mr. Groh indicated, assuming you wanted to go with Alhuda and assuming you wanted to have the city play a role in it, do you want the city to own it? Do you want the university to own it? Not that the university expressed any interest in owning it. <laughs> or do you want the school to own it? I would say from the school's perspective, the school is willing to own it. And the school is willing for the city to own it. 
So that's kind of your issue, risk reward, as 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 to who would own the school if if you do it. I think on the financing side, again, I agree with Mr. Grow that um, sort of the simple way to do this is either for the could be what he lays out as his preferred option, which is the 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 school buys it, the city provides guarantees towards it for some period of years. Um, and get some security in exchange for that. And the university loans the money. That's like the simple way. Uh, there are other ways uh, which have not been investigated in detail because we wanted to kind of start with the simple stuff and kind of see where we are. Uh, but I believe it is conceivable, although challenging and take a lot of work, to get private financing that could work if the university did not want to finance it. But it's clearly easier if the university financed it. Um, let me stop there. Okay. Uh, Mr. Brewer, uh, just to ask, is there anything you want to add? Uh, no, I think Jim summarized it very well, uh, along with Steve. Okay, thanks. Um, I've got Mr. Warren and Ms. Stolikin and Dr. Kabir. Yeah, thank you. I, um, I, I just thought that um, Senator Rosapep's uh, um, sort of broader context was helpful before, um, before we delve into the finances more, but if I can actually maybe add a little bit to that because sure. I, I, I think um, um, I think it's important to, to, to know what the what our different alternatives and sort of are and sort of hash that out and, and ultimately and ultimately the, the decision is going to be up to the uh, Academy board of course as to where they where they which option they decide to pursue but um, but it's going to be up to uh, and we're going to play a role in it obviously either way if uh, if uh, uh, as a city if it's um, and I want to point out that there's there's um we, and I think we've talked I, I can't remember what we've talked about in in um, as, a, as a full council together or, or um, um, and um, we've had a number of meetings separately about Al Huda and, and some, some of the details but uh, um, but there are some um, pros and cons to the uh, to the tariff and trader site site as well um, and I don't know if do you want to discuss those as well just so that we can get a, a bigger picture of the sure I mean I, I can do that briefly I mean I think for the, you know, from everybody's point of view, everybody knows Terrapin Trader site, everybody knows Al, Al Huda site. I mean, you know, the, the site for Al Huda, it's a traditional school with the pluses and minuses of being a traditional school. Um, both are within walking distance of metro stops. Obviously, Terrapin Trader will also be right at the Purple Line. Uh, obviously, the car access to, um, for most, most people, I think, would say that the car access to the Terrapin Trader is better than the car access uh, to Al Huda. Uh, Al Huda has a whole bunch of green space around it, which at least for the middle school kids is probably a good thing. Um, and obviously Terrapin Trader doesn't. Um, from a community development point of view, and I think everybody agrees with this, is Al Huda is in a neighborhood, which in revitalizing neighborhood, that's a good thing. Um, uh, Terrapin Trader is on campus and easier for people on campus to participate with the school, and that's a good thing. Uh, so that's, that would be my summary of, of kind of the the non-financial <coughs> pluses and minuses. All right. And then, and I think Steve wanted to say something. I, I want to add one thing to that, um, it, not to be, you know, beating the same drum, but um, the Terrapin Trader property, um, uh, there's no purchase involved. So therefore, um, if the, uni the, the university, I guess, has, um, is willing to, um, renovate the building and build an addition to the building to suit the needs of the academy uh, for the $500,000 for 30 years or whatever. So therefore, there's no borrowing that the city needs to take on, uh, and there's no supplementing uh, borrowing that the city needs to take on. Uh, the academy can pay their $500,000 rent to the university, and they get their finished building. Except that there are, I mean, there are financial drawbacks to the to the tariff and trader side as well, and 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 one perhaps being that that um, um, the university isn't going to let the academy or the, uh, the 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 relocation costs for the for the university, from what I understand, are pretty significant, as are the remodeling. Well, it, it, except and, uh, the, the remod, from what I understand, the remodeling costs were going to be included in that price. The the uh, possible relocation cost were not going to be included. Uh, however, I guess that's something that could be negotiated for something else. Right, right, and that's and that's the, the, it's still sort of an open question as to what what the um, 
um, what that something else is, what the, what else the, the city wants to put into the game in order to to make the tariff and traders say say it work. But yeah. if I just could, I would encourage you for for the purpose of this discussion, literally tonight, but also next week when I hope you can make some decision about this, is not worry too much about what the university's proposal is going to be. Let the university worry about what the university's proposal is going to be and then see what that looks like compared to what the city's proposal is going to be. Because I, 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 the threshold issue for the university is how much do they want it on their property and what are they going to be willing to do to finance it that way. And the threshold issue for you is how much do you want it at El Huda and what are you willing to do to get it at El Huda. And if neither of you um, can come up with proposals that cost $500,000 a year for 30 years, we got a big problem. If both of you come up with proposals that cost $500,000 a year for 30 years, then we can weigh the non-economic uh, aspects of this. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Stellick? So I'm, I'm struggling with that because it, it seems to me that what we need to grapple with is the pros and cons of two different options, and I'm not sure how we can just come up with a proposal in a vacuum. I mean, it, it does seem like it's a, a question for us is which proposal is more financially viable? I mean, which location is more financially viable? And, you know, and, and then also weighing in all of the non-monetary pros and cons. Um, and so I, I don't, I guess I feel like what we're being asked to is to sort of put forth a proposal without really knowing what the alternative, without Absolutely. having Absolutely. And, and we're asking the university to do the same thing. And we haven't figured out any other way to do it is to say, let's come up with two proposals and let's look at them. And they're not necessarily, you know, the final deal with anybody, but it's like, let's, is there a model that the city could look, think, maybe the way to think of it is this. What if the university doesn't come up with any proposal that makes any sense? What would the city be willing and want to do with El Huda? If you assume the other option isn't available, maybe that's the way to think about it. Otherwise, we're never gonna. I mean, otherwise, we're never gonna have any. Nobody's gonna have anything compared to anything. Well, I, I guess the way I, had, the way I had heard it previously was that, that the, tariff and trader site had a bigger price tag for the for the whole project than the Al Huda site. But it sounds like that may not necessarily be the case. Well, it does. I mean, it it does. In the absence of the university deciding how to deal with that, that ball's in the university's court. They need to decide, can they fit with it? What the board has said to the university and is saying to the city, we can't, enter t we can't accept a proposal that costs more than $500,000 a year that for 30 years. The, so either they come with something or they don't. Right. The part that I'm having trouble with is that I don't feel like we can commit to saying we definitely want to do it one way when we don't know how the other way might work. I, I'm not following that very frankly. Well, it, it, uh, go go I mean, ahead. I mean, yeah, I mean so, we're being told to put, a, put forward a proposal, but I don't know if we think that would be the best proposal. So okay, we want well, to be part of weighing the, the two proposals. I mean, but right now, apparently, I mean, we, we discussed this in the various meetings about whether both proposals should come in at the same time, and then you weigh one against the other. Um, and. I mean, that's kind of the way we're thinking about this. And it's not like we're all opening transparently with each other. I mean, Ann Martins is here. And, uh, you know, I mean, it's all very transparent. It's not like we're having a secret no, bidding not. process. But, so, but it's like we've got to have, we gotta have a real option where the city says, not, you don't have to say, let me, let me, maybe this helps you. I'm not asking, the board is not asking the city to say, we want to do this and not the Terrapin Trader. I think what the board it wants the city to say is we would be willing to do this if we decided that it was the preferable way to go. Maybe if I could just uh, sure, please. finish and then other people sure. can have a chance. Sure, 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 sure. 
maybe it's the word proposal that I'm getting hung up okay, on. I might is. be more comfortable with this if we're if what we're talking about is developing an option. Perfect. That, amen. Okay. Yeah, I, I second I that. That's what we're okay. looking. That's what it is. Here. All right. If we my, my problem with English is the first Alberta, language. Which of these models that you see? Yeah, it's model. That's a good way to do it. That's so, good. So we would develop one option. Would, yes, 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 yes. Much, much better. Problem solved. Right, and there's so like on page 76 where you have three models. The, I guess the, the questions for the council to think about is, um, would you rather the city own the property? If, if, if it's Al Huda. If we go with this. Okay, exactly. if it's Al Huda. Exactly. Would you prefer that the city own the yeah, property definitely. or would you prefer that the academy own the property? We know the university probably doesn't want to own the property. So there, there's sort of an either or. Um, would you prefer um, to pursue the university as the lender uh, or to pursue other lending options? Now, when I spoke to... Uh, a senior vice president of SunTrust, and he gave me what the city could do. And I said that, that Senator Rosenpap had mentioned that there are lenders that specifically lend <coughs> to charter schools, private schools, whatnot. And he, he actually, he said, well, SunTrust actually happens to be one of those lenders. But he indicated to me that the financing option that he would um, – that SunTrust would offer to the Academy directly would not be as favorable as what he's offering to me now. Okay, and that's irrespective of the Academy having no credit, bless you, credit rating and new and, you know, all that other kind of stuff. Just in general, he would much rather take a general obligation from us, uh, and that's, you know, reflected in the interest rate and the term. Right. So, right. Uh, so, so these options are, you know, who is the purchaser, who is the lender, uh, and whether the city, it, it, in my opinion, whether the city is willing to bear a potential shortfall in the debt service each year. Uh, <clears throat> being that if it was 3.3% for 20 years, it's $694,000. They have $500,000 to spend, so there's a $194,000 shortfall um, for 20 years. Um, is the city interested in covering that? And then the, the, the last area is, is the city willing to be a guarantor uh, if the academy is the um, is the purchaser, and you know, and the university wants a guarantor. Um, you know, that's a contingent liability on our financial statement. As far as borrowing is concerned, for other purposes, um, this would look like um, city borrowing, whether it you know was actual or contingent. Um, so you you are to some extent um, giving up ability for the city to borrow for its own purposes. Um, so those are the things I think that, that um, you know, that Jim is looking for the city to r sort of refine as right. far as so boy, if it's... The one option instead of three currently. Yes. And th so that you have one Al Huda option, and then when the university well, comes in when they're with Terrap and Trader, then you can compare one to the other. And I would refine that by saying... A, the city's preferred Al Huda option okay. that meets the five hundred thousand dollars standard, either no, zero no, or one. Right, that's understood. I think. But what okay. is the? So, are there? I, I was sort of hoping to see like the written down pros and cons of each option, or you know, financials associated with e each option. Are we? Not well, see, I was only asked to describe um, the to describe options. no to describe model, model three. Uh, and so I've given sort of the pros and cons of Model 3 in my memo on page uh, 74 and 75. Um, I wasn't asked to describe, to, to get into Models 1 and 2 because they weren't my preference. I mean, I could... You prefer Model 3. You think well, Model I, 3 I prefer, is more prudent? I prefer Model 3 if I had to choose one of these because I think it gives the city the least exposure, um, and that would be my goal. 
uh, exposure on its financial statements as far as contingent liability and exposure as far as having to come up with a shortfall of $194,000 per year. So that's the only reason that, that I chose Model 3 of those three. Could we structure something different than, you know, than these? I mean, there's only two possible purchasers. It's either the academy or the city. So there, there's really no variation there. Um, because the academy is new, um, I, I doubt that somebody is going to lend the academy $10 million with no guarantee. Um, could the guarantee be us and the university? Possibly. Does that really help? I, I don't know. And, and Model 3 is, is presumed to be a 30-year loan uh, period or not? Yes. Yes, okay. Because that's the only way you can get close to the $500,000. Yep, that's right. Which actually comes to 513, but uh, I'm, I'm, not worried about, government work. I'm not worried about the 13. Right. All right, uh, Dr. Kabir. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. And, and I actually agree with Senator Rosa Pepp about focusing everything on this property only instead of comparing the other property because we don't know much about the other property. Uh, only thing we know a few things. Um, um, so some of the things I I'd like to actually uh, add, other than the, uh, and I'm coming to the um, the, uh, the three models that uh, Steve actually talked about, um, and this all came in the town hall meeting that uh, Councilman Morohan and I had about three weeks ago, and Frank Brewer actually uh, joined there, and uh, and we spent about more than an hour uh, with our residents there. So the residents, they are very much excited to have the school there. And, and part of that reason, um, the reason they're excited is that um, we do have a elementary school, which is Hollywood Elementary School, which is, which is quite a good school. Uh, but we don't really have a middle school or high school. And uh, the schools we have, like Greenbelt Middle and uh, the high schools, they are not as good as College Bay Academy. That's why you see the long waiting list, right? <laughs> um, so, so we were all excited about uh, having this school in in, in the in, in the city. And I, I'm I'm not talking about my district, even though I'm I may sound like biased, but that's okay. I don't mind. <laughs> um, the uh, and it's a good thing because we are promoting the city uh, to be a place where other residents, other people can move in. And that's, that's the part of the campaign we've been doing. Um, we spent quite a bit of money last year <laughs> attracting other residents and businesses to move in and live here and do business. Um, so if you have this call, we expect other parents, and the academy parents, because they come from all over the county, they will most likely be moving to College Park um, and and be living there. And, and the, one of the problems we are having now as the students uh, from Hollywood Elementary, they come out from um, fifth grade. They actually, the parents actually move out because we don't have a good school, um, middle school, high school. So uh, it, it's a bad thing for, for the entire city. Um, so I wanna, I, I wanna, I'm trying to convince, uh, rather entice my colleagues to look into all these things that uh, this should be an asset uh, for the entire community, entire, entire city. To, to have this school. And um, I understand there are, there are some concerns about the, um, the, uh, the three models. And I agree that uh, the borrowing, um, the having the city borrowing the entire amount is, is, could be risky because we already have debt of 7.6 million on the, uh, on the, uh, on the uh, parking garage. Um, and adding another 10 million could be, <laughs> could, could be a little problematic. Um, but uh, um, with Model 3, probably it's not as risky as the, uh, the other models we have. Um, so I just want to um, add those things that just let's not only look at the dollars and figures, dollars and cents, but also look at the other positive things we still can offer to the city. All right. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Warren and then Ms. Stolick. Um, yeah, I think uh, I I guess I'm still struggling a little bit. So we're, so we're, we're with what we're trying to do here. So we're trying to put together the best um, reasons why why the academy should be in a, in, in in the Alhuda site to the academy board. Um, what the what the benefits, what the assets are for. What option 
you if we, were, if we put if, it if, at the if office you, side. If you that's were, a better way to think about it. Okay. Okay. Because I, th I think that's clear. I mean, I think from what Mr. Gross said, said uh, the best option for us is, is the third one. My, I guess my question is in what, what um, um, because there's still a question, and I think this, this matters in terms of which, which, um, which option is, is, is even feasible, um, um, what, whether this, uh, this option of getting the university to give the, the loan of, five, of, uh, uh, of uh, a 30-year mortgage at um, 3% is whether the university is willing to put that, put that into this. Well, um, let, me, let me speak to that. I don't know is the truthful answer. Okay. But I would say at some level it kind of doesn't matter for the purposes of making this decision because the issue for you is if the university were able, were willing to lend the money at an interest rate that make the numbers work, I am confident they would want you to guarantee the loan. <laughs> and so the question is if they were willing to do it because they don't want to own the building. They don't want to have to deal with renting it to somebody else. They don't want to deal with selling it to somebody else. I, I think they would see that as the, the city ought to take that on. So I think they would say um, if they were willing to lend, and we don't know they're willing to lend, so I don't want to in any way why they are, but I think th they would want you to be the guarantors. So the, I think the issue for you is would you be willing to? You might say, no, we're not willing to. I mean, it's too big a risk. We don't care that much about having an Al Huda. We don't want to do it. I mean, that, you could make that decision. I'm not saying that either of you guys would say that. <laughs> but I'm just saying I think you as a council have to say, decide, would you be willing to if the, if the university did it? The other possibility, which we haven't talked about much, is I do believe that if the university weren't, from my talking to uh, these uh, financial consultants who work with schools, is they believe that it is possible, although difficult, with new market tax credits, with a whole variety of other kind of financial structures, potentially to make the numbers work. Uh, much more complicated than the university as a lender. But for you, it doesn't really make any difference unless you say, well, we, don't, we wouldn't want the university as a lender. We don't want to be in debt to the, you know, we don't want to have, we don't want to have a contingent liability with the university, which I don't think you'd say, but you could say that. Um, or you could say, we'll only do this if the university lends some money for some reason. Uh, that's what you got to sort out, yeah. is would you be willing to do the guarantee? I think, I think and, what, and the answer to that question, I think, depends in part on, on these um, factors um, that, that Mr. Gurl lists on the second page of his memorandum is about um, um, that our ability to borrow, because this impacts our ability to borrow. I think that's for other main, our main concern is whether or not we're able to borrow for the other things that we need, the um, city hall relocation or, or whatever. Um, uh, and that's considered based on a number of ratios analyzed over a three-year period, the debt to fund, fund balance, debt per capita, and other calculations. Um, it would be good, and, I'm, and it's not in this memo that I see, um, to know what, what impact it will um, guarantee this loan would have on those ratios. Um, because, uh, I mean, uh, uh, if, it's, if you're talking debt per capita, um, then you divide it over, over you know, 32,000 people. Um, uh, it's probably not... not it, um, it's Right. It, it's that not this loan that's potentially the problem. Where I see it is you've got three of these things lined up um, as that two weeks ago we did – uh, okay, two weeks ago we had a new city hall um, in our dreams um, that would either be here or somewhere else or whatever, and we figured we would have to borrow some money for that. Okay, well, in the last two weeks, you got $10 million here, and you got $10 million for the undergrounding of utilities. So it's the cumulative well, effect that's if we don't do it of TIF. all that. Well, I know, but the, the TIF has its own problems. Right. Um, the One being the interest rate is double, and two is that you need a, some backup guarantee, which is either a general obligation or a special taxing district. But we, um, but that, but so anyway, it's that. the cumulative effect of all these things that is the problem. It's not any one individual item. Right. I, I understand that, but I, and I think that that all adds up, obviously changes these ratios. But um, I think it would be good to know what the what the ratios would be and how if we're guaranteeing as opposed to guaranteeing and you borrow and us borrowing is the exact same thing okay. as far as the ratios are concerned. Okay. I already checked that. Okay. 
then it would be good to, to know what that, that difference is. Because, I, I mean, if you look at per capita, it's not, it's not a huge amount. Okay, but even if you could, okay, even if you could pass these ratios, let's just say, if, if you've got, and it's two agenda items later, but if you've got a tough budget situation that you're starting because you have really no assessment growth and all that kind of thing, um, how can you pay the debt service? You know, you're taking on 20 years worth of debt. Um, you know, the, the charter school may make it or they may not make it. But I think, I mean, I think there are other options that we, if, if you're talking about how we as a, are you talking about what the, this is, this is what the bank will consider or what? Well, we I'm, I'm talking about it's two things. It's what the bank will consider in order to grant the loan, and it's what the city can realistically pay for, you know, without some major, you know, tax rate increase. There's a lot, and there's, there's different options that we consider to protect ourselves down the road. If, if something happens with the academy, we can we can look at if it uh, we can and I, and I think we've, we've talked about the possibility of a right of first refusal, so that we have the ability to 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 take over the land and sell it to another another potential owner. Um, uh, what if that takes you three years to find another potential owner? Well, then then that's a then that's a risk, but. Uh, I mean, you're paying $500,000 in debt service a year while you're trying to – I mean, I, I'm, it's my job to point out, being Eeyore, to point out the worst-case scenarios, um, and I see that as the worst-case scenario. All right, but I, I, and I, think, I think we need to keep that in mind, but also – but in term, but it seems like the biggest concern that you're bringing up is, right now is our ability to, to borrow other money. And I, and I think it, it's help, it would be helpful for the, for the council to know – Exactly what impact this is going to have on our ability to borrow money? Does it mean does it mean that we're not going to be able to 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 borrow money to, to renovate City Hall, or does it mean that you know I I, I I hear you talking about these ratios and it's not really giving us it's, it's these factors that that are out there? But what what, what impact is it going to have? Okay. Uh, what, what, that would be the impact, though. I have to assume if it was just this loan. It wouldn't have a major impact. I think the real question is if we go back to the previous item, that's another whole that loan on top of these. And then as we discuss this a little bit further about move, looking at Calvert Road to move forward with City Hall, that's another item. I mean, so it depends on what the council makes decisions to do. Then we maybe answer these questions better. Are we going to buy that undergrounding proposal? So, uh, Senator, are we, you know, are, are we going to go? You know, even if we use this model, it doesn't mean it's going to happen. Senator Rose Pepin and Ms. Stellar. Yeah, I'll be brief. I mean, I would just want to draw one distinction between the city hall and the undergrounding, and a potential guarantee in the school. Is both the city hall and the undergrounding the city would have to pay the debt service from its general revenue. That is not the case with the school. The, the way the proposal that Steve has put together is designed, and certainly the way the, the, the school intends, is that 100 percent of the debt service would be covered by the lease from the school. And I, as a citizen of College Park, would, would not urge you to do this without a lease with the school that covers your debt service. So it would not be a cash outlay. There is the risk that if at some point in the future the school um, moves or closes or something, exactly the risk that it could be the case that for a year, for two years, for whatever, you could have that risk. There's no question about it. But that really is the only risk because the debt service, the way this is structured as Steve's proposal, would be entirely covered by the lease. Um, Mr. Stark. So, um, I feel that what I would be willing to do is to say, of the three options, that we prefer option three, model three. Um, what I'm not so willing to do at this point in time is to say we are willing to do option three because I think really we need to weigh. The two sites. Right, and absolutely. I don't think we can, you know, in a vacuum without evaluating the relative 
the pros and cons and costs and benefits of the two sites, I don't feel that we can commit at this point in time and say, yes, we're willing to go forward with site A. I, I just don't feel that that's prudent. I think what we should, what we, what we could do is to say, we can narrow down the options to Model 3 um, for, for that site. Um, and I guess the one other thing I just wanted to say is um, I'm just thinking back to the four cities meeting that we had here um, about a week ago, and there was the idea raised about having innovation incubators along Route 1 that would be low tax zones and to spur innovation. And, of course, we want to spur innovation and in incubators. That sounds great. But the concept of low tax zones worries me a sure, lot sure, sure, sure. <laughs> because there are all these things that, you know, for the good of the future of the city, we're talking about that cost a lot of money. And so the only way that we can pay for those things is by having revenue um, and growing tax base. So I just want to kind of put that dose mm -hmm. of, you know, cold hard reality because I know sometimes in one context it feels great to talk about, you know, sure. how we can spur innovation, low tax, and every low tax sounds great until you think sure. about the consequences for all of the other things that really we're being sure. asked to do. All right. Um, so I'm, I'm seeing at least heads nodding and no one disagreeing that of the three models that the third model is the one that the council feels most comfortable um, supporting um, if the Al Huda option is the option that the board chooses to uh, pursue. Um, one of the, I guess, slightly complicating decision-making frameworks here is that the board is going to be making a decision about moving forward. And just to remind people that this is not just Senator Roosevelt, he's the chair of the board, but it includes uh, one council member, Denise Mitchell, who unfortunately couldn't be here tonight, um, and a uh, longtime council member, Bob Catlin, who's very uh, knowledgeable and concerned uh, about the, the fiscal prudence of things that the city does. So um, I do think there are people at the board that would be sort of keeping those considerations in mind as they were making uh, their decision. It, it is the board's decision, though, about like which one they would pursue, and I do think it's fair to the board, I mean, to the, the academy board that the city would be saying uh, we are willing to um, be the, uh, the guarantor uh, under Model 3 because in some ways that we, you know, feel like it would be an asset to the city. We, I believe that one of the things that's underlying this is that we would like to have the academy in the city. Um, so um, we see that as a value, and so uh, the Al Huda option is one option of doing that. Um, I guess the other thing I just wanted to add is that because of the proximity to the uh, College Park Metro and that's res uh, zoned residential, I don't feel like it's an especially risky property to be the guarantor of. I think you meant the, to the Greenbelt Metro. The Greenbelt Metro. Yeah, yeah. What did I say? It's, uh, it's, uh, yeah. it's one of College Park's metro stations. Exactly. It's called the Greenbelt Metro. <laughs> College, I'm sorry. College my metro apologies. Metro. North College I Park. I often think of that as the Northern College yeah, Park metro absolutely. station, but it is the Greenbelt Metro. Absolutely. Station. absolutely. Sorry. But so I, I wanted to say that um, we have in the past. Um, acquired land in College Park Woods, um, and which we had a good sense that we were going to be able to sell, and we did, and we were able to come out of it. Um, and we've Lucky. done things in different parts of the, uh, the city. I, I see people laughing, but it, it, my memory is <laughs> It seemed like lucky to me. Oh, okay. Well, anyway. <laughs> we we thought the finance director was smart. for a long time. All right. <laughs> well, since. but I guess what I'm saying is that there is some precedence of, of this. Um, and so I, I guess I, I think that uh, for us, um, you know, to give a strong indication that um, if the Al Huda board, I mean, if the Kosh Park Academy board um, chooses the Al Huda option, that the city should actually feel good about um, the action it's doing and not feeling like we're being dragged into it. Um, Ms. Stellar. So there's a part of this, though, that I'm worried about. Mm -hmm. If the idea is that we put out an option, the university puts out an option, and then the school chooses, then that means we're not in the decision making. No, I, no. That, I, that's what I thought I heard you say, is that the board of the academy would decide which of the two options it likes the best. Let me, can I speak to that? Sure. I mean, the board of the school will decide what it likes the best. That doesn't mean either the university or the city is going to agree with the board. I mean, you only have a deal between two parties or three parties, probably in this case, when it all comes together. So I don't think anybody would make a unilateral, deci would make a unilateral decision. 
but the board of the school has said we think either of these properties will work from the point of view of the program of the school. And here I will speak for the members of the board. Frank's on the phone. I guess we're the only two board members who are, who are here. Is I mean, I think the board would say, um, we think either of them can work. If both the, if, if the city were to say, we think Model 3 is something that is reasonable from our point of view, that we would seriously entertain if the school board is interested in it, and the university were to come up with an option that was equally attractive from a financial point of view, I think the board would talk with the council and talk with the university and say, let's decide together, okay, they both work educationally, they both work financially, what do we want to do? So I don't think anybody's talking about a unilateral decision. I, I guess as long I, as it I, comes back to us. I'm totally, sure. absolutely. Oh, absolutely. But I guess I, what I kind of meant is that we can't tell the school where to go. Is the school has a option of, uh, you know, it's an academy that's um, not run by the city. Right. No, it sounds like the school is okay with either option as long as it doesn't cost more than five hundred a year. That's ba it, it got much more complicated than that. Mr. Day and then Mr. Grow. I, I was just going to say that you know, kind of seems like we're only supporting one side of it at this point. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that's correct, because there are other opinions sitting over here about whether we go to Al Huda or we go to Turk and Trader. So for us to only put forward one option from our point of view mm -hmm. is slanted. Mm -hmm. All right, fair enough. Mr. Grove. Um, the, the only thing I would, uh, I guess, ask is um, the uh, Model 3, uh, w without a, a you know, contribution of $194,000 a year. Model 3 only works if the academy can get financing um, within their $500,000 right, right, exactly, budget. Exactly. Okay, so at what point um, is the university, for example, approached to see whether they have any interest in being the lender? I, th I, th I think as part of this process. I mean, if, 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 if the city council were tonight or next week, which I hope it will by next week, say there is an option, and it sounds like option three might be the option. This is an option, this is the option that would be our preferred option to consider if yeah. Al Huda is the place to go. And if they wanted to make, and if the council wanted to make that commitment, not just, um, well, in other words, not just, okay, we have to choose an, a, an option for, for Al Huda and for Terrapin Station, I mean Terrapin Trader. There, there, there's, another, there's another option, and, and that is the council says um, we're supportive of the school, but we aren't willing to commit uh, anything, dollars or guarantee, towards the school. We make our contribution to the school every year, and it's the school's problem to work this out. That's an option. No, it is an option, that's it. but that's exactly why the school is asking both the university and the city to come up with an option that they are comfortable with, I guess, is the issue. I mean, the way I would, I mean, we made this hard for you, so I apologize on my own behalf in the board in a way. I'm sorry, this, all we're looking for, I think, is is there an option in which it goes to Al Huda and the city provides the kind of guarantee that everyone believes would be needed for the city, for, for the school to actually be able to get the money? And one way to solve this problem, I'm not asking, trying to put anybody on the spot tonight, but I mean, one way to do it is just to say, okay, let's have a vote. Who doesn't want to go to Al Huda under any circumstances? That's one vote that you could figure out, and that could, that could resolve one issue. Second issue is, okay, if most people um, are open to going to Al Huda, are people open to, the, it, open to the city guaranteeing a loan to allow the school to go to Al Huda? That's the second threshold issue. If it's like no, then it resolves that issue. And I think that's all the school is looking for. Is there an option that seems reasonable to you all that, that you're motivated enough to say we'd seriously consider this? Because if the university comes back with an unacceptable option, 
for the Terrapin trader, we then are going to be in the situation of either it's got to work with something you're comfortable with or we're not going to be able to have a school in the city. And so we're trying to get what the real options are here. Does that <laughs> help at all? I wish that could be that easy. <laughs> Uh, Mr. White. I mean, uh, no, I mean that that makes that makes sense to me. I think um, um, with uh, we 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 may need a little better understanding of what what exactly the the risk is to the city in terms of the um, in terms of guaranteeing the loan. But I'm I mean, generally speaking, I'm I'm in support of, of the the Yahoo site, um, um, and um, and I'd, I'd like us to explore the options so that we really know what we're what what our options are with it. Um, um, and um, I don't know if I, I don't know, if Mr. Mayor, if you want to proceed with the, his suggestion about taking a straw poll. I'm not, and I'm not trying to put people on the spot today. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I guess where I felt like we were was that there was general agreement that if um, Al Huda was the option, the of the three models that are before us, that model three was the preferred option. Um, that's where we are. It, I believe, I'm not sure how it'll be recorded in the minutes, but. Um, the discussion reflects a uh, desire of the council to have more information before we make a commitment to uh, sort of uh, what we're what we're discussing. So I believe that gives direction to the board, the academy board, um, about where you know that if in fact we are going the outloader that preferred the three is the option. That helps a lot. That would help yeah. a lot if, if, if that is really the consensus. I don't know. I'm not going to. I guess I'm seeing heads nodding and people not disagreeing with that. I certainly heard Mr. Day and Ms. Ms. Stelic uh, sort of express the concern that this is not our final uh, opportunity to sort of weigh in uh, on actually the decision of what was yeah. going to happen. Because, you know, even though it's the Academy's decision, the Council really should have a lot of input in terms of where, you know, it's going. So um, Only you can do a guarantee. We can't force you to do a guarantee. That's right. <laughs> so I, I think, uh, Mr. Hugh? Um, <clears throat> so, so from what I understand, you know, from this uh, option three scenario set really that the um, w we're just looking at being um, carrying the risk if the school were to fail uh, that it's not really going to be a, a raise in taxes for our residents it's that the school's going to be able to come up with this money to pay this loan is that what I'm hearing correctly let, 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 me, let me state in my own words and see if this is responsive the deal that Steve lays out here that is consistent with where the school board is would be that the city would guarantee that if at some point in the future the school is not paying its $500,000 a year, that the city would pay that $500,000 for whatever year or part of a year would be involved, and that in exchange for taking that risk, the city would basically get, um, um, what, what, I'm drawing a blank. Right of First right, 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 that's the way I would put it. Does that answer your question? Somewhat. Um, do we, okay. Can we afford that? Please? Well, okay. If if the academy doesn't close and doesn't default, and if we get um, a loan at three percent for thirty years, then there's so no nothing. there's no financial impact to the city, uh, budget wise or or otherwise. Um, it's if something goes wrong uh, where there's there's the potential for a budgetary impact I would suggested um, you know if there's a default that we have some sort of grace period uh, where interest would accrue uh, but be added to the principal balance that we smart. wouldn't have to come out uh, we wouldn't have to be out of pocket the five hundred thousand dollars that we weren't collecting as rent um, so there, that's sort of the, you know, kind of worst case scenario. Um, so, if if they're if they if they're there and you get this loan at the rate you're looking for or the rate that they're looking for, then there's no budgetary impact to the city. The only impact to the city 
is the contingent liability that would go on our balance sheet for having guaranteed this $10 million loan. Uh, in and of itself, probably not a deal killer. Um, you take that and add a couple of dominoes to it, um, City Hall, undergrounding and whatever, maybe you do have an impact. I don't know. It's, it's too early to tell where the rest of the dominoes are going to lie. Uh, Mr. Day. Uh, are we 100% sure that Alhona is moving? And what is the... <laughs> Senator Roosevelt. Nothing is simple in this life. It's worth anything. Um, are we a hundred percent sure that they're going to leave in time for us to move in two years from now? No. Uh, but we've been doing a lot of work on this. Um, are we confident that they want to move as soon as they can? Yes. <laughs> Are we confident that they have a very specific executable plan to move in the next year or two? Yes. Do we know they have a place to move? Yes. Do we know that they're in the process of getting that approved? Yes. The only thing we don't know is whether the approval for where they want to move could get delayed uh, with appeals. And therefore, there is a risk that we won't be able to make a deal and move it in two years. The good, the good news about that is that we actually have a two-year lease with two one-year extension options at St. Mark's. Okay. And so that is a risk, but I think that risk is pretty well protected. Uh, Follow-up to that. Um, if they wanted um, a lease back for a year. They're very open to Okay. Can they afford to pay $500,000? The, the short answer is we had that discussion and they said yes. And they said the le a lease back approach is something that they're potentially interested in. So, um, so, so the short answer is yes. I, I, from our discussions very recently with them, I, I, I don't think that's the significant risk in the deal. Uh, Ms. Stalling. So just reading between the lines, so they, they have a site that, they're that they want to move to. Yes. It sounds like there is opposition on that end that yeah. they are trying to overcome. Yes. So that's a, that's a risk, too, that they might Yeah, not. but I, mean, I can give you the long answer to it because we've done a lot of research on it. Would you like sort of the long answer? It's like a short version of the long short answer. short version of the long answer. <laughs> yeah. I don't understand the zoning process in Howard County that well, but it's a specific property in Howard County that they want that fits what they want to do. They tried to get it through a zoning change that was the unusual way to do it a year ago. That failed. The opponents, and the opponents are basically people who are worried about traffic, um, and understandably. Um, and so even though it is, it, even though it is, here I'm not getting the words right, it was approved for a, a, a school and for um, a church. And so it, it, it's already set up for sort of what they want to do. And the folks who were originally doing it ended up not getting their money didn't come through, so it's there. They tried to do it through one planning process that didn't work. The, the opponents in the neighborhood are concerned about various issues. Um, said, "Don't go this way. Go through the regular process." And so they backed off. So they are now going through the regular process. It's not a special exception, but it's a conditional use. There's some language in the zoning law in, in Howard County. So they are now in that process. It is on the agenda for a decision by. The planning office, like in March? March 6th is a hearing. March 6th, okay. The hearing is March 6th, so it's actually in the process. Um, a decision will be made with some period of time that I can't, I don't have in my head. That is appealable to the Board of Appeals in Howard County, uh, where the, and we don't know it'll be appealed, but let's assume worst case it's appealed. From talking to current and former members of the County Council in Howard County, uh, I'm told that that could be as little as a month or two. That could drag out for a year, but it's not going to drag out for five years. And um, everyone I talk to believes the law is very much on who to side, and that if there's not some weird thing, they clearly have a right to do it at this site. So they're highly likely to get approved at each level. The question then is: Does somebody decide to go to a circuit, to go to the district court or the circuit court or something, and try to take it to court? Um, again, you never know what that hap when that happens. So theoretically, it could get dragged out longer. There is no reason to believe that's going to happen, but that's the long answer. Right. Okay. And if I may, I just had one other.
comment and just with respect to the risk. Now, I know we want the school to succeed, so sure. we don't want to believe that the worst case scenario could happen, but sometimes they do. Sometimes the yep. things that you Absolutely. fear do Absolutely. come Absolutely. to pass. And I just wanted to point out for everybody that if that did happen, it's not so simple or easy like um, the, the pool property or, you know, because this is a property that we would be paying $500,000 a year payments on. So if unless you got uh, unless you negotiated something into the loan to allow you not to pay five hundred thousand dollars in the event for some That's finite period of time oh. uh, in the event of a default that that the you know that the it's accrued interest you know gets to added to the end might be critical now I don't know if the university is the lender if that would be very well, I, I, I don't uh, know either but. Uh, if that would even be something they would consider but just what I want everybody to be conscious of is that if the worst case scenario did happen then all of a sudden five hundred thousand dollars a year payments have to be made from somewhere unless the lender is willing to say you can you know have some time like six months a year two years I know you know the property is saleable um, all property is yeah, saleable, absolutely. but I also know, you know, there may be a lot of community concern about who might buy it and what might happen to it and what impact that might have on the community. So I don't think it would necessarily be easy to sell quickly in, you know, the community context. So I'm not saying I'm opposed to it. I'm Thank just you. wanting us to go in with our eyes wide open that, you know, of the potential risks. Yeah, I agree, and I also want to thank uh, Mr. Grove for inserting the uh, clause in the uh, Model 3 that it, the loan could be structured with such a guarantee, because I do think the more, um, you know, safety we're building into this model, the better uh, for us. Um, I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor, when Mr. you have a chance. Yeah, I Mr. Bennett, did you have something you wanted to? I mean, uh, you were talking about worst-case scenario, and best-case scenario is you guys grow and you get to a point where you might not fit in the new space. And we want to move out, yeah. Right, so... <laughs> I don't think it's going to happen. Is there risk in terms of the the, the agreement with the, the city being the guarantor uh, and them having a the ability to sever their their part of that and then place that on on the city as the guarantor? Sure. I mean everything. Um, I mean that's. I was trying to cover you know the school closes or the school defaults but if the school outgrows the site for example although there is a lot of open space in the back that they could build more additions to but um, right. I mean Jim asked me to design the best case scenario for the model that I was least opposed to right that's fair. okay that's and fair. so that's what I did that's fair. Um, <laughs> and whether anybody would accept you know whether the university for example would accept a deal like that I don't know um, but you know I, I think you know going in you you know if you, you're going to ask for whatever you know you want you throw in whatever you know, whatever protects you the best. Which is a 30-year lease. But my assumption, Steve, would be if they're going to outgrow it, they're going to own the building. They just sell it and pay us off. And well, they're, they're, they're giving us... <coughs> good point. I mean, right. That's a very good point. Or well, they expand to another site for the overflow. You know, there's lots of scenarios. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Senator Roosevelt. I'm sorry, I'll be brief. One thing to keep in mind that I think we haven't quite touched on is, and this I'm very confident of, I mean, there are two ways the school would not be able to pay on its lease. One is that demand for the school goes down. We don't have enough kids coming to school. That's one way it happens. The second way it happens is uh, the school loses its charter and contract with the school system. Neither of those things will happen on short notice. <laughs> So it is highly unlikely. This is not a situation where one year everything's fine and the next year everything's terrible. If one begins to see a decline in enrollment, you're going to begin to see a decline in enrollment, and everyone's going to know what's going on. So I think there's an early warning system there. Same thing with the um, with the contract. The as you may know from just reading the uh, the newspapers about the fights over closing charter schools in this Columbia, it takes a long time, even when the charter schools are disasters. <laughs> 
it's hard to close schools where there are kids going to school who have parents. And so in reality, uh, yes, could it happen? Of course it could happen. But it is, it, I can't imagine how it, how it happened. If, if it happened in the worst case scenario, it happens on anything less than what, two, three, four years. And, and therefore the city as the, uh, as the guarantor and the, and the school has the opportunity to figure out just like Al Huda's doing, it's sort of they're outgrowing it, so they're trying to sell, they're trying to sell to somebody. That's what would really happen, I think. All right. Well, let me let me just say I agree with that. I mean, the the suggestion that the school could move to someplace else without selling that property uh, isn't reality in right. terms of looking at the budget. Right, right, right. right. Uh, Dr. Kabir, and then Mr. Wine, you please wrap us up. Yeah, very quickly. Um, and this is this is this is my question is about these models, and uh, in particular model three. Actually, it's, it's a kind of piggyback questions. Um, Councilmember Wehan was asking on model three. Um, so we certainly don't want the city borrowing the entire amount because uh, it's a lot of money, ten million dollars, and uh, it'll put us into very high risk. Um, and we don't want to become another city of Detroit <laughs> and go bankrupt. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but at the same time, uh, um, on option three, even if you become the guarantor, um, what kind of changes we'll see on our um, financial, financial um, statements? Like um, every year we do have um, Audits. Um, you know, two weeks ago we had a CFR um, um, annual audit, and they came, and they said we have excellent um, health in, in terms of our finance. So, do you see any change in there? If no, it, it's that's not what it is. In other words, they when when they came when the auditors came to do the presentation on the CAFRA, they're reporting on the city's um, internal controls, the city's financial controls. They're not reporting on the, uh, I'll call it, credit worthiness of the city uh, to borrow. Um, they're, they're looking at the financial statements and whether the financial statements, you know, present fairly the city's position, good or bad, okay, but present fairly the position. So here what you're talking about is you're talking about a contingent liability that would show up um, on the balance sheet, and it would show up as a footnote in the financial statement saying the city has, guarant has guaranteed a loan of $10 million to the College Park Academy. In the opinion of management, uh, the academy will continue forever and ever and pay the debt on time, and the city's guarantee will have no effect on the future. That's the best case scenario. Um, but that's, that's the grand extent of this from a financial statement standpoint. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Wayne, <clears throat> wrap uh, us up. Yeah, thank you. And just, um, I, I, I think there, we do actually have a guard, guideline in our city charter about how much debt the city can take on, and I believe we're very, very far from ever. You are very far from that. That's that. correct. I, I, don't, I don't know what the basis of, of establishing that was or whether, the, whether that were, there was. Five percent of the assessed value. Right. I, I know that. But, um, but whether, there was, whether that was set based on some sort of um, assessment of what of when, when we're credit worthy or not, or if that was just. That's, out of the that's pretty much it. what it is statewide okay. for most of the municipalities. Kind of a best practice. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I think I mean I think that's that that at least has something that we're still pr pretty far from where where what our own established limit is. All right. I think this has been helpful. Uh, thank you very much. Thank Senator you guys Senator very much. Thank you, Mr. Garo. Thank you for your patience. Oh, sorry, Mr. Gardner and Mr. Oh, Negro. I just want to make sure what are we what are we doing as follow up on this. Um, so I, just so we know what we're doing here. Well, so uh, I believe we got a strong indication from the council that Model 3 is the preferred option. Do we need to make a resolution of some sort for the board, or can we simply? I don't think so. Don't think, not at this point. I think that that would be. So we, no one needs to take this to agenda next week unless the board's. You really think? I'd like something, very frankly. Right. Well, and you can weasel word it as much as you want to we weasel word it. it. I, well, mean, they can, I mean, I, I, I mean, they I can take a motion to. Just like we did for the uh, downtown development. We can do that. Okay. Simple, simple motion. So, staff will. So, who would like to take this um, next week? Mr. Warren? All right. Um, so, staff will draft a. What you the reflecting the discussion tonight? That'd be great. Okay, but th that includes the selection of Model 3 yes. plus additional. W wishes yes okay what do you mean 
by additional wishes. I'm sorry. Well, in other words, that the, oh, the, oh, his uh, belt and suspenders. Protections. Yeah. Right. Not wishes. Protections. Yes. Protections. Uh -huh. yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Now, as a, as a follow up, to that, Mr. Mayor, we also had the city hall on here, and I just wanted to throw this out on the table. We're, you know, we're talking money tonight, so we might as well throw more of it out here on the table. Um, you know, based on the conversation that I heard last, I guess it was last Thursday or whatever day it was for the partnership meeting, there didn't seem to be much interest on the part of some of the council members in developing staff and faculty housing over at the Cal College uh, Calvert Road School site. What, what, what I'd like to know is if the city council is willing to let us begin looking at that site for City Hall. At this point, we, we're sort of sitting here floundering about what we're going to do for City Hall, but I thought the idea would be to look at that site and start bringing our consultant in because we have, the, you know, we have to renegotiate and come up with something new there, but... We still have some bond money left. We still have some, we have some money we have put away in the CIP and get started on that. Now, I, I had a conversation with the Senator last weekend and he made a suggestion and I, and I don't think it's a bad suggestion that in our design that we consider looking at a pre-K or pre, what is it called? Daycare. I guess daycare. that's a better word. I'm not familiar <laughs> with all the words, but daycare. Little kid better. thing. <laughs> For real little ones. Yeah, yeah. real little ones. <laughs> little Thomas. ones and up to a certain age. And I don't know what age group that yeah. is. I don't have any information on that. But that be incorporated within the city hall building or design of some sort. That's an excellent suggestion, uh, and Mr. And so if there's Day. no objection to that, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to go ahead and get staff. Mr. Day just wanted to make a comment, I think. Yeah, I just have one question. I thought at one point during that conversation the university was going to think about whether they were going to come back to us with anything to at least look at or review? No. Oh, yeah. uh, Senator Roosevelt. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, let, let, let me, um, I totally agree with everything, everything Joe said. Basically, at um, the discussion we had, whenever it was, they all run together in my mind, too, about the Calvert Road site, um, there was a lack of enthusiasm, I would say, from the city side in terms of um, uh, doing faculty and staff housing there. Uh, there maintains a uh, abundance of enthusiasm from folks from the university. And what we agreed at that meeting was that the university could go back and decide, did they want to abandon the idea or did they want to do some sketches and a little bit of design and come back and show people, here's what we're thinking. And so uh, Omar and Carlo did come back to me in, the, in my role with the partnership and said, we kind of want to give it one more shot because we think that when people see the great idea we have, they'll be convinced. And I said, we, we said, we'd, you know, we didn't rule that out. We said, come back if you want to come back. And they said, we do want to come back. They said, but we understand there's a lot of skepticism about it. And so we don't in any way, and this goes to Joe's point, we don't want in any way slow down the city uh, developing the other option, which is the... Uh, the city hall, maybe child care, that sort of stuff. So it's, it's a little bit like the, the school thing. It's like universities is, is kind of coming up with its ideas, and the city, the idea would be the staff, they'd come up with the ideas, and then everyone look at them together, and, you know, the city, nobody can make the city do what they don't want to do. That, but that's the idea. But they're going to do that, like, in the next two weeks. And you, you're not going to have your city hall stuff together in the next two weeks, obviously. But, but they, didn't, they didn't want to slow you down. Their point was, we don't want to slow you down. Excellent. All right, thank you, Mr. Day, for that question, and thank you, uh, Mr. Negro. Mr. Dennis. Yes, I, I think you might have answered part of the question that I have, is in what time frame would the University of Maryland have something in, uh, you know, that we could consider as uh, housing development on, the, on that and, property? Actually, I'll turn to Ann if she's still here. Do you know what your schedule is for next couple of weeks? So couple of weeks. Just for the record, for, so um, she indicated Ann Martin, so who's here, our guest. Uh, That the university should be getting back in the next couple of weeks or in February. So, thank you. Uh, Mr. Negro. Okay, I mean, uh, why do, do you want why to, why don't we do this? Why don't we wait a couple of weeks to see what the university brings? We, we'll start from our end. Okay. But what I'd like to do is, when we know for sure this is what we're going to do, which would hopefully be in the next three weeks, we could do a formal motion to authorize staff to move forward with the Calvert Road. That sounds School. very good. Does that make sense? 
Uh, Ms. Tellick. So you're saying we would make the formal motion three weeks from today? After you hear what the university might have to offer or ask for at that site. That's yeah, right behind that. Yeah. Yeah. Is that still the thinking after you see their sketches? But I'm leaving it, you know. You I'm wondering about what the process is for thinking about moving City Hall to the Calvert Road site and what are the steps in that process. And, and I think what Mr. Negro is suggesting is that the staff would be looking into, would begin looking into what would be the details of that. And then so they would eventually be coming back to the council. So we would not be making a commitment to do anything. It would be simply authorizing right, staff but, to. But, but there's work that they could start doing now, right? They don't. Oh, yes. They could start that process yeah, on the staff to negotiate the staff numbers side. and so forth. We have, we have to the bring in the current vendor, make sure he's willing to work at that same pricing that we had for this building. Right. Uh, and if not, we may have to consider whether we want to go out to bid. Right. I, I'm certainly, you know, think we should Those look are at the drawings we that we may right have now. in a couple yes. of weeks, but I also think we've been sitting on the fence for a long time. No kidding. I agree. It would be good to move forward with exploring. So we've got to start moving forward, but that isn't going to impact where you guys are going with this other. Good. All right. Without objection. All right. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Grove. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Roosevelt. Thank you. Oh. Uh, thank you, Mr. Brewer, for staying on. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Mayor. All right. Um, we now go, we're moving quickly, and thank goodness my new realty was pulled from the agenda. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, we're going to go to uh, item number six, which is the award of contract.